Hello, in this video we're going to look at statistical distance as opposed to just distance. Um, but, but first let's look at the distance formula. So if we have a set of data points, and now I drew an ellipse around it just so you can kind of get a general shape of where the data lie in the X1 and X2 plane. But if we're looking at the distance from the origin from this point here, you know, we, we draw a little line from it, but we can create this right angle. And then we know this distance and this distance, and we can use Pythagorean's theorem. And then this is the formula for squared distance. And, and throughout the, the video, I call it distance, but it's really squared distance because I just don't want to draw the radical sign every time. And so th this is it. This is the distance. But if we again look at this point, um, in, in regards to X2, it's sort of at the extreme top, you know, so it's not as, you know, it's not a very likely point in the X2 range. But if we look at X1, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of in this, you know, it's sort of more in the middle-ish. And so it's more likely. And so, um, so statistical diff distance actually accounts somehow for this variability in both directions. And um, so what we do is this. So the squared statistical distance from the origin is this. So we take each the the x1 value and divide it by the square root of s, the standard deviation associated with the x1, and then we square it, which like that's what we get here, and then we account for the stand the uh, the variance or the standard deviation associated with x2 by dividing by the square root of s2 or the you know the standard deviation associated with this way and then we square it and then this simplifies to this so what it's what it's trying to do is put x1 and x2 on a more similar playing field you know as far as you know you know, extreme values in either way are, would then sort of be similar. So if we wanted to find, say, the equal statistical difference, distance from the origin, then we'd have to find all the points that satisfy this uh, formula here. And so um, all, if, if a data point, which has a, a you know, a, two components, one and two, and this is for any c squared, then, then they're equal distance from the origin. And this creates an ellipse in, in R2 space. Now, if we want to find the square, square distance between two points, not statistical dis distance, just square distance between two points, then the standard formula is this. We subtract the first component squared plus the second component squared, and that's it. That's the square distance between any two points. Now, I almost wish I'd have made this at more of an angle to illustrate that it works for anywhere in R2 space, but I didn't. So X1 and X2, this distance is this formula here. Now, the, the same way works if, if we wanted to find the uh, statistical distance between two points what we do is we standardize them or scale them I should say by their standard deviation so we take the difference in the first component squared divided by the standard deviation associated with that first component and then we do the same thing for the second component and this is the statistical distance between any two points. Now, if we want to find, let's say we, we have a point, pick a point in space, and we want to find the equal uh, statistical distance from that point, then we have to find points any that satisfy this formula. So in this formula, the x, x2 point is fixed. So these are fixed. Then we're varying these two components such that this, this formula equals c squared. And so what that does is it creates an ellipse around the 
point and these are all equal statistical distance from that point and it, and it factors in the standard deviations associated with each of these variables and so in this formula you know we're fixing the x2 point which is the second you know the second component here or the second part there um, and this can it can be generalized to R in space you know it doesn't have to be in R2 but you can draw pretty graphs in R2 but for in space you just take each component divided by you know the its standard deviation and this is the nth component in in that point and so this is this would be the uh, squared statistical distance between two points but notice that when I drew these ellipses each time it's kind of either elongating up or I drew one that was elongated this way earlier and those if you think about it those are the data points don't really have a correlation associated with them so what what if the components are correlated does that change how we think about statistical distance and the answer is yes okay so ignore this for now and so if we look at this picture and our data points do this to find statistical distance say from the origin we not only have to take in the the variability along x1 and the variability along x2 we have to take in the correlation because if we pick this point you know okay it varies you know in this direction but it's also because they're positively correlated, well, we're more likely to see a positive value in this X2 component. And so statistical difference changes, distance changes in when your data points are correlated. So one approach, and actually the, the most common approach, is we rotate the axes. Okay, so we take, well, let's just show a picture of this. So the, these two are supposed to be the same. So we take these axes and rotate them an angle of theta and and that's and that's so such that in this rotated axis so there's no correlation again between the two two data points so we rotate the axis then we use the previous formulas to find statistical distance and then we transform it back to the original x and x1 and x2 coordinates okay and so Essentially, we remove the correlation between our variables in this new x tilde coordinate system. You know, we, we just rotate it up and then we're back in the no correlation. Um, so what it ends up looking like, so the squared statistical distance from the origin in our x tilde system is exactly what it was before, right? So we've transformed each of those variables. And now, and, and then you might say, well, what transformation? And I think that you can go to any calculus book and look at this transformation. It deals with cosine of this angle and the sine of this angle. And I'm not going to get into that uh, rigor rigmarole in this video. But in the next video, when we look at what's called principal components analysis, then there will be very specific in how to find that, you know, where that... Uh, vector is pointing you know where it is where it's lined up and where this is lined up but in this video we're just given a general overview so here's the statistical distance in our rotated axis now we need to convert it back to sort of the regular r2 space you know even though they're both r2 it's the original r2 space and then we get something like this so we get coefficients in front of our x1 and x2 variables and it's this cross product that that accounts for that the you know the uh, you know the line instead of being up and down to be angled. Um, now the a's and and actually let's move on. Um, so then this can be written in this form, and then generically this can be written in this form, which is called quadratic form. Now this symmet this matrix here is symmetric, and that's why there's two times this. Um, but these A's, they involve the standard deviation, 
of each of the variables and the correlation. Somehow it, that is mixed into this uh, matrix. Um, so now if we wanted to find the uh, squared statistical distance between two points, um, it, it's the same way. So we, we rotate the axis to eliminate the correlation. We calculate sort of the standard statistical distance formula and then we take this and convert it back into the XY, we get something like this, where this is another quadratic form. Now the A, of course, you know, that there's information in that about the, the variances of each, each of the variables and the correlation of, of each of the variables. Um, if we wanted to find, if we wanted to say fix a point, so X2, and we want to find equal statistical difference distances from this point, then these are all the points, say X1, that satisfy this relationship. So X2 is fixed, and then um, we, we, we change this point up until it equals C squared. And then what that does is we end up getting another an ellipse, you know, around X2. And, you know, the, the major and minor axes are parallel with these rotated axes or perpendicular depending upon which way you're looking. Um, and so this is that equal distance from this point here. Now, these statistical distances here and even this one, those are called uh, Mahalanobis distance. All right, and it's very important in statistics. Um, we're going to talk in much more detail in the next video when we look at principal components and what that's dealing with. It ends up uh, we want to maximize linear combinations of our data points or our, you know of the components, and we and then that tells us actually how to rotate axes to find maximum distance. You know, if we look this way. The distance is here, and the and the in the, this direction, the distance is here. But with this rotated axis, look, that's the that's the biggest distance, and that's actually what principal components analysis deals with. And as a reminder, this these quadratic forms have to be uh, positive definite because we're looking at distances, which are always non-negative. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.